Hey, it's Tetard here, and today I'm going to show you my really, really compact and small decimal to BCD encoder. I guess it's more of an input to binary to decimal. It has a memory cells over here in order to capture what you're putting. But let me just explain to you or show you what this does. So we're going to put in three to this first register. So as we can see, the first one has three in it now, three in binary to decimal. So we're going to put in the number one. 53 so we go to the next um, next I guess register next digit so let's add in five and then next digit <coughs> for the one I guess it'd be better to do this in reverse you can design it any way you want this is just how I have my input section but as you can see as it's reading out here in binary coded decimal we got one in the hundreds place we got five in the tens place and then three in the ones place. I have this set up on a few different systems. I'll explain more later, but then we got our clear right here. So you can just clear the whole system. It's still on that last digit, which is okay, but we don't really want to, you just have to press next digit for that. So the way this works is we just have a standard, like a, we have eight buttons. We also have the zero, which in for all terms is just a reset of the current register. But yes, <coughs> um, we have our eight inputs that get decoded into binary decimal, which is still just binary at the small form. But yes, it goes down our buses to our memory cells. The way the memory cells is selected is we have this new copper bulb um, binary counter right here. So the way it works is, <coughs> see it counts in binary. <coughs> Super compact and it's great. So I have that binary counter set up to a binary decoder just to have the line separated. When this line is not powered, it powers this, which in fact lets redstone signal come into the circuit for writing. So whenever this section is powered for that digit, it allows it to write. But the most, uh, what, what's nice about it, and I'll show you here, and it took a while to set up, is we put in one, right? And now we want to reset that to four. We might have to clear it first. No, we can just put in four and it's going to get it. Because every single time any button's put, a pulse is put through the whole um, memory registers. And if the pulse and the line is on, it will reset it before it writes the new number, which I think is a pretty pretty cheeky function of this mechanic. Um, finally, the last digit, we're going to go to the hundreds place. So this is an 8-bit um, decimal to binary system. So the last, um, the last memory cell only needs to carry up to 3. So what I did to make sure, so <coughs> here, I'll try to input um, a nine. A nine is one zero zero one. So you'd think you would just put one in here, but it doesn't because I have these two gates right here that both get XORed. I, um, <coughs> I have the ones and the twos place and gated and then XORed. And then I have the, the three, sorry, the four and the eight on an OR gate that's XORed and compared. So what this is saying is if, both of these are odd. We're going to get a number of three. So we want to make sure it doesn't write to the memory cell if we give an input that's not supposed to be there. And any time that anything's over that, like either of these lines are put on, we're also going to tell it to not write, which I think is a pretty interesting component. This can be expanded to um, even like larger, like hundreds, thousands of place. You just have to extend out um, the bus and make the binary counter a little bit big. And this is just a standard binary counter and the new update copper blocks are very revolutionary. But yeah, I feel like you should be able to understand this. We have a, we have a, just a decoder for the inputs for uh, one through nine that goes into a bus and then it's put into memory cells. The memory cells are set to read or write or set to write whenever it's selected by the counter that we have a button that shifts it and then it saves it to that. Any time that this is pressed, we want to reset the cell that it's on. That way we don't have anything like rewriting or making it invert so it will be safe. And then we have end cases for the final bit, which these aren't necessary. You don't have to add these on. I just added them on to make it more neat. And then a full reset, which just goes through. <coughs> it powers every reset line for a full reset. But also you have the, um, the cases right here. So I don't know, I might put a world download. If there's enough likes on this video, you wanna see it made, I'll make a tutorial for it. But this is just a little showcase to show you exactly how, what the copper bulb can do.